C minus student. Not to break up with my boyfriend over, over some self imposed rule. I feel totally bored with myself. Such a bitch shot at getting into college. I see my brainy, adventurous little sister with all these interests. I wondered what it would be like. Stop crying. God. I'm Jim Fritz. I need all you dozens of viewers out there to just tell me how you like this, alright? So if any of you guys out there have siblings, it's possible at some point in your life, maybe you wanted something your sibling had, right? Maybe you had an older sister named Jenna who was way prettier and cooler and smarter and more popular and better in school than you. Maybe your sister had cooler Barbies, better clothes, a cuter boyfriend, friends, the ability to read, a dad. Maybe maybe your sister was tall and skinny and blonde and beautiful and you were pudgy with butter teeth. And maybe she was into normal girl stuff like talking on the phone and listening to Shania Twain and you were busy making weird videos where you would glue cotton balls to your face and pretend to be Kenny Rogers and John Denver. Maybe your sister was born with naturally perfectly straight teeth and 2020 vision and you were a braced face four eyes. And like maybe you felt like your guys' life was like that movie Twins and you were Danny DeVito and she was Arnold Schwarzenegger. You guys had that too, right? And here's my video. Well, did you ever want what your sister Jenna had so much that you wished upon a star that your brain would be placed into her body? Like I for sure never did that, but if you did and you were alive in 1996 and you probably loved the Disney Channel movie, Wish Upon a Star. <gasps> About the two teenage sisters who magically swap bodies after wishing on a shooting star. I wish I were Alexi Wheaton. Starring Katherine Heigl, Debbie Thornberry, 90s frosty makeup, 90s clothes, 90s hickey, ever present science fair project, gum glass, finger fungus, and Bonnie from Rigoletto? And Mr. McBride? What? They're all connected. This movie was literally everything to me as a kid, and watching it now as an adult, it is just okay. And I cannot wait to relive it with you today. So grab your sister. If you don't have a sister, grab a friend. Get out your plastic blue jackets, and let's talk about Wish Upon a Star. But first, a word from today's sponsor. It is so good. Mm, mm. Mm. I'm not even hungry. Mm. Who came up with this, Chef Ramsay? Hello, friend. Oh, great. They're playing live music outside my studio. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> As always, if you're interested in checking out HelloFresh, you can visit HelloFresh.com and use code JamieZ16 at checkout for up to 16 free meals plus three surprise gifts. Oh, great. Again, that's HelloFresh.com and use code JamieZ16 at checkout for up to 16 free meals plus three surprise gifts. Thank you, HelloFresh, for sponsoring today's video. And sorry about the background noise and my strep throat. Now back to the show. Can I get to go, box? Hey, kids. We're back. So the movie opens with a young Katherine Heigl. Her character's name is Alex or Alexia. She's getting ready for school and just looking as frosty as ever. My seven-year-old self literally thought that she was the most beautiful thing I'd ever seen. Just 
pure frost. So it immediately cuts over to her sister, Haley, who is like Alex's polar opposite. A, she's not frosty like at all. And B, instead of getting ready for school, she spends her mornings reading Scientific American. So you can kind of see what's going on here. The parents are there. Mom's reading psychology today. Is that Kelly Kapowski with a doggy snout? Someone Google that. So they're ready for school. Haley is just kind of waiting on Alex to stop primping herself. Alex gets catcalled by a bunch of grown men construction workers. Oh my God, Brooks and Dunn, I love your work. So the parents kind of kick things off here. They come to this decision together that they're no longer gonna interfere with the girls' lives because every time they try to tell the girls not to do something, the girls, of course, do the exact opposite teenagers and i'm pretty sure they read about this like parenting method from the dog face kelly magazine what have our patients been telling us all these years that their parents have ruined their lives oh never mind the parents are psychologists <laughs> it wasn't from kelly kapowski <laughs> so the girls get to school late Haley barely makes it to class <laughs> i didn't think this was going to happen four minutes and 40 seconds into this movie but here we go guys let's all give Haley a big warm welcome to the new and improved female protagonist fall compilation <gasps> So later that day, Haley's chilling with her bestie, who by the way is Bonnie from Rigoletto. I had a mini freak out as you saw. What? Bonnie, I like thought for sure I would never see you again. Like I definitely thought Rigoletto would have destroyed your acting career. Just I'm so happy. And we find out that Haley actually has like a pretty big crush on her own sister's boyfriend. Haley. <laughs> Haley, my girl, a little advice here. Okay. Two things you gotta remember if you wanna get a guy's attention. A, make sure it's not your own sister's boyfriend. B, clean the dirt from under your fingernails. Just a suggestion. So later on at Din Din, the Wheaton family are enjoying a nice family dinner. The girls each have a guest. Alex has her boyfriend, Kyle. Haley's got Bonnie. Everything's going well. Haley suddenly decides to get up and bring her big old science fair project and sit it in the middle of the dining room table for no reason. <laughs> I watched, I kind of like went back and watched this scene a couple times. I was like, why did the science fair project have to sit there? The whole family has to like lean to see around it so they can talk to each other. And it's just never explained. <laughs> You've got to be kidding. We have guests. I don't mind. Be prepared for that because that science fair project is, it's everywhere. So after dinner, each girl's doing their own thing. Okay, Haley's doing some nerdy telescope stuff. Alex is sitting in the hot tub with Kyle, literally not saying any words. When suddenly a shooting star shoots by. I wish I were Alexi Wheaton. Yeah, that's right, guys. Haley is sick and tired of being the smart, responsible, perfectly well-liked sister who leaves her nasty, spitty, dumb blobs everywhere. Yeah, she'd rather be the high-maintenance, bratty, snobby, frosty beauty queen that giggles super weird. <laughs> <laughs> Who could blame her? So as you guys all know, if you've seen this movie, Haley's wish ends up coming true. They wake up the next morning in each other's bodies. So we have Haley in Alex's body, but I will still be referring to her as Haley. And we have Alex in Haley's body, who I will still be referring to as Alex. Don't get it twisted, okay? Zone. Don't do it. The scene where they like discover that they switched bodies is super chaotic. I never noticed it as a kid. <laughs> Yeah, your body is so nerdy and gross and has dirty fingernails. And don't touch my boobs. Ew! The girls get like super violent with each other. <laughs> so then Alex, meaning Alex and Haley's body. Okay, you got it. Alex tries everything to get this wish like reversed. You guys just had a wishbone lying around? What's the story on that? So they kind of just decide they have to accept their new bodies, at least for the day. Alex does Haley's makeup and makes her frosta, and then she dresses in Haley's clothes. I just have my own style. Oh, dirt under the fingernails is in. Glad I'm not the only one who noticed. Today, you're mine. He really seems like he's looking forward to it. Kind of a random thing. I thought that they made happen in this movie with this living photo of Kyle. I don't know, it just doesn't fit. It only happens once in the whole movie. Maybe if they had showed other alive photos of people, it would have made more sense to me. Today, you're mine. 
touch me again with your dirty fingernails, see what happens. On that note, kids, we have to take a short little break, and when we come back, Alex does a gross strip tease. Don't miss it. <laughs> Me in my bathroom at 2 a.m. trying to see if my boobs reach my belly button yet. I don't get why she's suddenly ashamed of Alex's body when she was super excited to inherit it an hour ago. <laughs> so Haley finds out that Alex and her friends have this rule. Like remember Mean Girls, how they had rules? Like Wednesdays we wear pink. Well, Alex and her friends have rules too. Don't bring another tuna fish sandwich. One of them being they can only date someone for three months at a time. Alex, hello. hello. You hit the limit. What limit? The three month max. As of midnight last night, the clock was up on Kyle. And Haley gets super upset about this because I guess she's already forgotten that she's not actually her sister. Okay, Kyle, whatever I said last night, I didn't mean. I wasn't being myself. Hold on, this is the guy you're in love with, right? You picked his picture boogers with your little dirty fingernails. Don't you want him to be single? Like, wouldn't it be good? If your sister and him broke up? Meanwhile, Alex is at home just eating her body weight and oh. sugar. She's not worried about maintaining her sister's body, but she expects her sister to maintain hers, you know? You look like you're craving a salad. Anyway, while she's vegging out, she gets a visit from the neighbor boy, Simon. You know, the one who, like, always has his mouth hanging open. Oh. Oh. She's super mean to him because Alex is super mean and she's already forgotten that she's living in her sister's body and therefore should be acting like her sister. I I've been wanting to meet you. Thanks for the cookies. <laughs> It's just kind of like an annoying thing because they went so far as to dress like each other. Like they really wanted to keep up that appearance, but then they just stopped there. They made zero attempts at acting like each other. Since when do you listen to this? So then we get this grossly long makeout sesh between Haley and Alex's body and 20 something year old Kyle. <laughs> Welcome for that. I'm stuck in this measly little body for another day while you parade around ruining my reputation and destroying my beautiful nails. Says the girl who spent the whole day eating snacky cakes and cheesy poofs. <laughs> No. No. Hypocrite. So Alex is like, I've never seen a whinier character, I don't think, in any movie. <laughs> See what I mean? And after like 37 minutes or so, it's kind of exhausting. Because I'm, I'm in the, the wine, wine business, business, not, not the, the whining, whining business. business. Where's Calder when you need him? You might have my body, breasts, and boyfriend, but you are not me. Go to your own room. Fine. Hmm. But what will mom and dad think? Uh, they probably won't notice because they're the world's most uninvolved parents. Or they'll just think you guys switched rooms. <laughs> so the next morning, Haley wakes up to this note that I guess Alex got onto a step stool and hung in the middle of the night without waking her up. And it says, you're going down. Meanwhile, I'm going to dress like I'm headed to one of those weird pony play conventions. <laughs> Wait, did she just have that in her closet? So Haley's like, all right, you want to play hardball? I'm game. I'm gonna commit one of the seven deadly sins of high school, which is wearing the same outfit two days in a row. Isn't that what you wore yesterday? Mm-hmm. Did you at least shower? I gotta say, I was a lazy pile of junk in high school, and even I never did that. It's one thing to not shower, but it's another thing to like not care if people know that you didn't shower, you know? What do you want? Oh, uh, I was just wondering if you like my sweater vest. The girls just start sabotaging each other immediately when they get to school. So like Haley ruins Alex's like prom court photo. A, because she's, you know, she looks disheveled. She's got her shirt half untucked <laughs> and she makes some silly faces. It always killed me in high school when I would want to take like a ugly face pic with my friends and I'd be like, hey, come on, let's take an ugly face pic. And I'd be like, <laughs> you know, I would do something super uggo. <laughs> and they would be like, I'm so ugly. <laughs> That's what Haley did here. Like she could have really sabotaged this photo if she wanted to. And I think she let her off easy. Queen. Alex is being a saboteur too. She writes a mean note about her sister on the wall. <gasps> Not a wench. Later on at lunch, Alex does a gross strip tease in poor Haley's body. And the fellas, they just cannot handle it. Look at this guy. <laughs> Even the nerds are feeling it, man. 
I read somewhere in my research that this scene was cut is cut from some version, so lucky us, we get to see it. But I can definitely see why it was cut from some versions because it's kind of creepy. Kind of gross. She's playing a high schooler. The pony play outfit was bad enough. So the girls get in a ton of trouble. And by a ton of trouble, I mean the principal threatens them. One more scene of misconduct and I'm going to suspend you. So they both have like these goals throughout the movie that they're wanting to achieve. Haley really wants to win the science fair project. Alex wants to be like, I forget what it's called, something equivalent to like prom queen or something. And they decide that they're not gonna ruin that for each other. So they kind of call a truce and they start doing like sisterly bonding activities, you know, like stargazing on a blanket with Haley's science fair project. <laughs> Why is that thing always around? Anyway, so they're talking about boys and Alex is giving Haley some advice. I'd, I'd be all tongue-tied. So forget about talking. Go in for the kill. Like as in just kiss the guy before you meet him? Forget about talking, go in for the kill. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that means kiss him before you speak to him. <laughs> Solid advice. So they decide to stay in each other's bodies for one more day. One more day is each other. Alex really wants to prove to Haley that Haley could get a guy to like her if she just had a little more confidence. It's just a matter of having confidence. Not like pony play level confidence, but just a little more, you know? Just so long as the discipline doesn't come from the parents, we should be just fine. <laughs> it sounds extreme, but uh, it seems to be working. Hey, Dale. You missed a spot. I was gonna wait until the dance to tell you this, but I want you to know something. I'm 34 years old. I love you, Allie. Yeah, see, he doesn't realize that he's starting to fall in love with Haley in Allie's body. What are we gonna do? Conflict, love triangle. Haley, of course, doesn't say it back because she knows it's not her boyfriend, it's her sister's boyfriend. So Kyle's getting all distressed. There's sad music playing in the background. This is so great. To make matters worse, he walks out and sees her giving Simon a ride home. If I could have a ride. Sure, get in. Here. Oh, so sweet. I love chocolate covered toothpaste from the gas station. Yeah, smooch. Sorry, what? This dude has had a total of two one second long convos with her. And he thinks that this $2 box of chocolate covered coagulated Pepto-Bismol bites means that he can just go in for the kiss. I mean, for the kill? I think not, Simon. So he explains to her that at first he had this big crush on Haley, but she's just too wild for him, obviously, because he's like not into pony play and he clearly doesn't know that Alex overtook her body. So he thinks he actually likes Alex, that he doesn't realize it's Haley, even though he thinks Alex is actually ugly. Physically, you're not really my type. It's what's inside that really matters. Yeah, thank God she's pretty on the inside because Katherine Heigl definitely wasn't like supermodel gorgeous in this movie. Should we take him to bed ourselves? Oh, it's not as if we're telling them to go to bed. Okay. Good idea. Here we are, baby. Okay, why don't I believe that those two parents got these two deadweight sleeping teenagers all the way up those steps and into their beds as easily as this movie made it seem? So then Haley wakes up and she wishes herself back into her own body and I have a qualm. Okay? I have a qualm. First of all, what are the odds that a shooting star would be back at that exact moment? How did you know what time it was coming? What happened to the plan of you guys making the wish together? Like, isn't this like a hugely urgent thing where you're living in someone else's body and you just like fell asleep? Or did they fake fall asleep and make their parents haul their deadweight bodies up the steps? And lastly, where is the science fair project? It would want to be included in this. Oh, never mind. It didn't even work. So they head to school and Kyle breaks up with Alex because he saw her get non-consensually kissed by Simon in the parking lot. Yeah, smooch. About which she says zero words to defend herself. I saw you groveling with some other guy at your car yesterday. Were you spying on me? Because this is a 90s tween rom-com and we don't defend ourselves against injustices. Injustices. So then it's time for the science fair, okay? And the science fair is just, I mean, the nerds are coming out of the woodwork, okay? Look at this, we got this greaser nerd whose project is about acupuncture. We got this girl with a spider hat. This kid with a Cheeto volcano. <laughs> I'm sorry, can we hear that again? 
I can't even do it. He deserved a bigger role in this movie. So while the science fair is happening, Haley is trying to get Alex into college or something. I can't remember, but it doesn't matter because all that matters is that food boy's grandma is there mm -hmm. at this meeting. What? Oh my God, what are the odds? <laughs> Never thought I would see her again. But I'm sad to say no food comes out of her hands, nor does she have a single line in this movie, but she is there for our viewing pleasure. Okay, kids, are you ready for the big plot twist? The twistiest plot twist of all plot twisties? I made a wish too. I made a wish that I was you. Why would you wish that? So this whole time that you guys thought that only Haley wished she was Alex the night of the first wish, you were wrong. Turns out Alex had wished the same thing. There I was, this, this C minus dude. Not to break up with my boyfriend over, over some self-imposed rule. I felt totally bored with myself. Much of a shot at getting into college. I see my brain being adventurous little sister. With all these interests, I wondered what it would be like. Stop crying, God! I would be so mad if I were Haley right now. Like, hold the phone, okay? You wish you were me, and then when it worked, you straight up vecnid me in the bathroom the next day? Not cool, but. Whatever. So after they come to this realization, they figure out that in order for the switch back to happen, the girls have to make the wish together. And wouldn't you know it, there happens to be another shooting star at that exact moment. Haley, look, right there. Oh my God, we And it works, you guys. You can tell it works because of the spinny, lowered opacity editing that really says these two are switching bodies. This is almost as good as that weird Freaky Friday sequel that Disney made. Do you guys remember that? I'm just glad this one didn't turn into a musical. So they're switched back into their own bodies. They go to prom as themselves. Haley, yeah, that's me. Alex gets back together with Kyle for the third time. He's very forgiving. She wins prom queen. The drummer to the punk band is super excited. Haley dances with creepy Simon. Alex crowns her little sister. They make eye contact for a super weirdly long time. Stop it. And then it's over. Did I miss the results of the science fair? Or whether or not Alex got into that college with Food Boy's grandma? Mm hmm. It was at the board meeting. Why would they not show? They literally showed an entire verse and a chorus of the punk band's song, but we don't get to find out if Haley wins the science fair. <laughs> bogus, man. And that right there is why I rate this movie as just okay. So fun fact about my research of this film, this has never happened to me before in the history of me reviewing movies. There are zero one star ratings of this movie on IMDb. There are zero two star ratings on IMDb. There are zero three star ratings on IMDb. There are zero four star ratings. The lowest rating anybody gave it was one person with a five out of 10 review and the review is entitled Good Enough. For a teenage movie, this one is fun and interesting. Sure, the plot is predictable, but the sister dynamics were good. Plus it was well presented. Well, Penny Elena books. I don't know that the sister dynamics were good. I think they pummeled each other and were violent. And I feel like the whole being in love with your sister's boyfriend thing is kind of creepy. Like, yeah, my sister had a cute boyfriend in high school, but I wasn't in love with him. I just liked messing with him because he made his AIM chat named DJ Snoop 427. Snoop D O double G. And it was supposed to be 247, like as in 24 seven, but he mixed it up. So I would just like tease him and throw stuff at him, fart in his cereal when he wasn't looking, stuff like that. That's what you do to your sister's boyfriend. You don't covet them, you know? I could not find the budget. I feel like all of a sudden I can't find the budget for any movies that we review. So instead of the budget, how about a fun fact? <laughs> this one was pretty funny. The boyfriend of one of the sisters, who is also the star basketball player on the team, so I guess they're talking about Donnie Jeffcoat, is actually an incredibly terrible basket player. Terrible basket player. <laughs> 
basketball. In real life, extremely uncoordinated. Filming had to be reshot an extraordinary amount of times due to his lack of talent with the basketball. <laughs> So that is all for me today, kids. For no other reason other than it's 8.30 on a Sunday night and I should be on my couch. And the moral of this story, kids, is even if your sister is more beautiful, more popular, smarter, funnier, cooler, has way more friends, and is overall better than you in every single way, you should just want to be yourself. Love yourself. Gotta go. Gotta go clean the dirt out of my fingernails. <laughs> so I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace out. <laughs>